Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering Cisco cybersecurity operations, and this is exam 210-255. So we move on to section 1.5 on the left here, which we says define these terms as they pertain to the Linux file system. So we need to know and or understand what is ext4 file system. What is journaling? Then we move on to the right here when we talk about the MBR, master boot record, what is swap file system, and is what is message authentication code. No media access, no Mac, message authentication code here. Okay, um, so what is Linux? Linux is an operating system that has been created in 1991. So Linux, it is an open source, fast, reliable, and small. It does require very little hardware resources to run and it's highly customizable. Very popular because of that, because it does need very few resources to run and you can make your own one. So unlike other operating systems such as Windows or Mac OS X, Linux was created and is currently maintained by a community of programmers. Because Linux, it is open source. Any person or company, me or you or anyone, Anybody can go and download the kernel, source code, inspect it, modify it, and then recompile it at will. They are also allowed to redistribute everything they recompile, anything they create, they can redistribute it. They can charge or they can get it for free. So Linux distribution is a term used to describe the packages created by different organizations. So Linux distribution, or distros for short, include the Linux kernel with the customized tools and software packages. So some of the Linux distributions are free, like CentOS and Fedora, while others are not free, right? like Red Hat Enterprise Server, which they cost money, but include support services. So the value of Linux. Linux is often operating system of choice in the security operation center. So if you want to work in, uh, in SOC or Security Operations Center, you need to know well, some basic commands of Linux, or you pretty much need to know Linux. You need to work around the Linux. So there are some of the reasons of choice. Uh, to, uh, there are some of the reasons to choose Linux. For example, like we said earlier, that it's open source. Any person can get the Linux with no charge, and they can modify it whatever they need it. This flexibility allows analyst and administrator to tailor build an operating system specifically for security analysis. The Linux CLI is very powerful, while the GUI or graphical user interface, you know, when you take the mouse and you click and select and next and so on, it can perform, it's easier for users who don't really know the uh, operating system, but it does add the complexity and requires more co uh, computer resources to run. So most of the memory on the Windows is going on the, actually the operating system to run. So the Linux command line interface is extremely powerful, powerful and enables an analyst to perform tasks not only directly on terminal, but also remotely because the CLI requires very few resources. So the user has more control over the operating system. The administrator user in Linux is known as a root user or super user that has absolute power over the computer. It allows for better network communication control because of the operating system can be tweaked and adjusted in particularly every aspect is greater platform for network application. The file system types in Linux. So the first file system type that we need to talk about is called ext2. So ext2 is still the file system of choice for flash based storage media because it lacks of journal link. That increases the performance and minimizes the number of writes. So ext3 or third edition extended file system, it is improved successor of ext2 with the addition feature of journaling of all the file system changes. Now journaling, we keep saying about journaling. Journaling is the technique used to minimize the risk of a file, uh, of a file system corruption in the event of sudden power loss. So ext4 or fourth extended file system, this is the latest and greatest. It, it is several improvements over its predecessor like ext3 and ext2. ext4 not only supports journaling that we look at a bit more in the next slide, but also support unlimited number of sub, sub directories, data structure of the file system, 
such as the one de designed to store the file data. This is done to, to this is done for better performance, reliability, and additional features. Other file system that you will find in the li in Linux are NFS Network File System. It is a network-based file system, allowing file access over the network. CDFS Compact Disk File System that was created for specifically for optical disk media. We have a swap file system which is used if the system runs out of RAM or physical RAM. We're going to be talking in one slide about a bit more about swap. HFS Hierarchical File System Plus. It is a primary file system used by Apple in its Macintosh computers. Then last thing again we're going to be talking about master boot record in the next slide. Uh, it is located in the first sector of partition computer and store all the information about the way the file system it is organized. So ext4 first. ext4 allows characters in the file characters in the file names that aren't allowed in NTFS. NTFS is file system of Windows, the latest file system of Microsoft Windows. In x4, ext4 we can use such as uh, characters such as question mark, colon or asterisk. XT4 can support individual files up to 16 terabytes and volumes up to 1 exabyte in size. Using checksum for drive journaling improves reliability and improves performance by avoiding waiting on the disk during the journaling process. Unlimited subdirectories, EXT3 was limited to a total of 32,000 subdirectories. EXT4 allows unlimited number. So journaling both ext4 and ext3 are journaling file system, as you can see. Um, now here, uh, ext2 is not a uh, journaling, while ext3 and ext4. Journaling, what it was, a journaling is a file system that maintains a record of changes not yet committed to its main part. The data structure is referred to as journal, which is a circle log. One of the main features of file systems that support journaling is that if if the system crashes or experiences power failure, it can be restored back online a lot quicker while also avoiding system corruptions. So Linux MBR or master boot record and swap file system. The MBR is a special type of boot sector that contains 512 or more bytes located in the first sector of the drive. The MBR will include instructions of how the logical partitions that have file system are organized on the drive and it also has executables called to load and install operating system. The most common bootloader in Linux are Linux Loader, Linux Load Linux and Grant Unified Bootloader which is the most popular. So as you can see the BIOS will do the integrity check, basic input output will do the integrity check first. Um, then we load the MBR, master boot record, which will load the execute the grub, and then the grub will execute the kernel, the kernel will execute init.d, so the daemon um, initializing, and then init will execute initi initiate run level, run level will execute the run level. So there are two main partitions of Linux, so we have a data partition in here which contains all Linux system data including the root partitions and the swap partition. Now swap partition which is an extra memory of the hard disk drive or SSD there is an expansion of the system physical memory. Even the windows have this uh, swap partition so if for example we have we use portion of our uh, hard drive as a memory and then in case we have running out of memory we can put something in the swap partition. So for example the oldest stuff that we don't, we, they are not used on the, on the RAM, instead of keeping them in the RAM, we move them to the swap partition. And in this, in this way, we increase our, um, well, RAM, random access memory. So Linux roles and file permission. In Linux, most systems entities are treated as file. In order to organize the system and reinforce boundaries within the computer, Linux will use uh, file permissions. So file permissions are built into the file system structure and provide the mechanism to define permissions on every file. Every file in Linux carries its own file permissions, defining the action that the owner, the group, and others can do with the file. The, fo the possible permissions rights are read, write, and execute. 
if you want to see the permissions like for example then you see the ls command and with minus l parameter list additional information about the file um, so you can see that on the on the right here well, that's all our files on this directory and we can see the permissions there as well now permissions that could be um, if there's all zeros that means no access zero zero one in binary yeah these are uh, let me go back execute only zero one zero that means write only zero one one write and execute one zero zero is read only one zero one read and execute one one zero read and write and one 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 read write and execute because if you have to change it you have to change it in binary yeah okay so here for example we see the uh, first letter is d it could be a dash so the dash means it is a file but for us we can see that this space as you can see here the space for example that's a directory it's not a file because it, you can see a d here if it was a file then it will be a dash then we have a se first set of characters so this is used for uh, user permissions or the owner of this directory the user root who owns the file can read write and execute the file then we have a uh, the second uh, the second set of characters is for the group permissions the group who owns the file can read and execute the file or this folder in this case but it, it, these are exactly the same for the files as well and the third set of characters is the own is for the any other user or group permissions they are not the owner the user or the group who owns this file or folder for anybody else, any other user or group on the computer that can read can read and execute the file. So it has 101. So the second field defines the number of hard links to the file. So the number two after the permission. So a hard link creates another file with a different name linked to the same place in the file system called an inode. And then we have the root for user and then we have a root for the group so the third and fourth field display the root the user which is root and the group root who own the file respectively and the next set the fifth field and displays the file size in bytes and then the sixth field we have the displays the date and the time the last file or folder has been modified and the last field is actually the name of the file or the folder Message authentication code, it is a short piece of information used to authenticate a message, in other words, to confirm that the message came from the standard, stated sender, its authenticity, authenticity, and has not been changed, which is integrity is there. So for example, if I, if I send a message, say to you, I send a message to you, I will create a hash with that message. And this is very easy to create the hash, but if we put a key as well, that creates another, well, different hash uh, that includes a key. So once you get the file, you, unless you have the key to create the hash and to compare that has not been changed and authenticity is there, then it's not gonna, you're not going to find it or you know, it's not going to work. So a message authentication code algorithm computes a tag or a hash over a message utilizing a shared secret key. Thus, a valid tag confirms the authenticity and integrity of the message. Only entities in possession of the shared secret key are able to verify the tag. A MAC requiring two inputs. So MAC message authentication code requires two inputs, a message and a secret key, and known only to the originator of the message and its intended recipients. This allows the recipients of the message to verify the integrity of the message and authenticate that the message sender has a shared secret key. If a sender does not have the secret key, the hash value will be different, which would tell the recipient that the message was not from the original sender. So for example, if you have a message that you don't want to send, um, you put a shared secret key and the message and you create this hash, so HMAC. And then you send the message, not the key, yeah? just the message and the hash to the destination. Now destination is going to take that message and it's going to use the secret key, which is same, should be the same key as this, and generate the hash. If the hash matches, then the message has not been, well, integrity is there, a message has not been changed. And the authenticity is this is the sender is actually 
yes he has a key so is it correct and that if the hash has changed well you're going to destroy that message or discard that message thank you for watching this section 1.5 define these terms as they pertain to the linux file system we talked about ext4 what is journaling the me mbr or master boot record what is swap file system and message authentication code please have a look in my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been astrid krasnici and bye bye